Ever wondered why some people are incredibly rich while others struggle to make ends meet? Today we dive into the fascinating world of the psychology of money. You see, our attitudes towards money aren't just about the numbers in our bank accounts. They're rooted deep within our beliefs, our values, and our past experiences. Think of money not merely as a tangible piece of paper or a number on a screen, but as a psychological construct. It's a concept that holds power over our behaviors, sways our decisions, and often dictates the course of our lives. It could be your ticket to that dream vacation or the cause of your sleepless nights. It's more than just a means to an end. It's a reflection of our innermost fears, desires, and aspirations. And here's the exciting part. By understanding the psychology of money, we can start to change our financial futures. Understanding the psychology of money can be the key to unlocking financial success. So let's get started. Get what is your relationship with money? Is it a tool, a master, or perhaps a dream? This question may seem simple, but the answer is deeply rooted in our individual money mindsets. These mindsets, shaped by our experiences, attitudes, and beliefs, significantly influence the choices we make about money and ultimately, our financial success. Let's delve into two common money mindsets, scarcity and abundance. The scarcity mindset is based on the notion that there's never enough. Whether it's money, food, or opportunities, Scarcity thinkers believe resources are limited. They often live in a state of fear and stress, worried about potential losses. Consequently, their financial decisions are typically conservative and risk-averse, which can limit their financial growth. On the other side of the coin, we have the abundance mindset. People with this perspective believe that there's more than enough for everyone. They're optimistic and open-minded, seeing potential where others see limitations. This mindset encourages risk-taking and investing in opportunities that can promote financial growth. But here's the twist, neither mindset is inherently good or bad, they're simply different ways of viewing the world. While a scarcity mindset may limit financial growth, it also promotes careful planning and budgeting. It's a mindset that can lead to financial stability, even if it doesn't necessarily lead to great wealth. Conversely, an abundance mindset may promote financial growth, but it can also lead to reckless financial decisions, if not balanced with a healthy respect for risk. The key is to strike a balance. We can cultivate an abundance mindset to seize opportunities while maintaining a scarcity mindset's caution to manage risks effectively. So take a moment to reflect, what's your money mindset? Are you limiting your financial growth with a scarcity mentality? Or are you harnessing the power of an abundance mindset to foster financial prosperity? Remember, our minds are incredibly adaptable. With awareness and effort, we can shift our money mindsets and create a healthier, more prosperous relationship with money. The mindset we adopt plays a significant role in our financial journey. Have you ever considered what money truly means to you? It's a question that might seem simple, yet it holds profound implications. You see, we all attach different values to money. For some, it's a scorecard, a measure of success in the game of life. For others, money is a safety net, a source of security in an unpredictable world. And then there are those who view money as a ticket to freedom, the key to unlock their dreams and ambitions. Now here's the interesting part. The value we attach to money doesn't just stay in our minds, it influences our actions, seeping into our spending and saving habits. Those who see money as success might be more inclined to invest in ventures for growth. Those who see it as security might prefer to save and those who see it as freedom might spend it on experiences. So, remember the value we attach to money can shape our financial habits. Ever found yourself buying something you didn't really need, just because you were feeling down? That, my friends, is a phenomenon known as emotional spending. It's a scenario where our feelings, rather than our needs or budgets, dictate our purchases. Emotional spending typically happens when we're experiencing intense emotions. It could be stress, sadness, boredom, or even joy. You've had a rough day at work, you're feeling low, and suddenly, buying that expensive pair of shoes seems like a great idea. Or perhaps you're ecstatic about a promotion, and decide to celebrate by purchasing a high-end gadget. This is not to say that treating yourself is always a bad thing, but it's important to remember that emotional decisions can sometimes lead to impulsive spending. And these impulsive purchases? They can pile up quickly, leading to potential financial instability. The key to stopping this cycle is awareness. Recognizing when your emotions are driving your spending is the first step towards gaining control over your financial habits. It's also important to find healthier ways to deal with emotions. Physical exercise, meditation, or simply talking to a friend can work wonders. 
So, next time you reach for your wallet in response to an emotional trigger, take a moment. Breathe. Ask yourself, is this purchase necessary, or am I just trying to improve my mood? Our emotions can have a significant impact on our financial decisions. Opening. How can understanding the psychology of money lead to financial success? Indeed, the key to unlocking the door to financial success lies not in the depths of complex economic theories, but in the realm of our own minds. Enter the power of financial literacy. At its core, financial literacy is about understanding how money works in the world, how someone manages to earn it, how they manage it, how they invest it, and how they donate it to help others. It's about grasping the basic skills needed to make informed decisions with all of the resources available to us. Yet financial literacy goes beyond simply understanding the mechanics of money. It's about understanding our relationship with money. The way we view money, the emotions we attach to spending and saving, and the value we place on our financial resources all play a pivotal role in our financial decisions. For instance, understanding that our emotional spending habits can hinder our financial growth helps us to take control of our financial future. Recognizing the value we attach to money can shift our perspective from seeing money as a source of stress to seeing it as a tool for achieving our goals. In essence, financial literacy means understanding ourselves. It's about being aware of our monetary behaviors, our strengths and weaknesses, and using this knowledge to make better financial decisions. Closing. Financial literacy is not just about understanding numbers, it's about understanding ourselves.